Welcome to the A320 air conditioning lesson. In this lesson, you will gain a basic understanding of how the air conditioning system operates. You will also learn how to control and monitor the air conditioning system using its associated overhead panels and the SD. The air conditioning system is automatically controlled by a computer known as the zone regulator. The zone regulator receives input from temperature and flow sensors to maintain the desired temperature throughout the aircraft. Two subordinate computers, known as the pack regulators, receive commands from the zone regulator and provide automated control of the two air conditioning packs. The output from the packs flow through a mixing unit and is distributed to three aircraft zones. The temperature regulation is further enhanced by introducing hot air supplied by the pneumatic system. Controls for the air conditioning system are located on the overhead air conditioning and ventilation panels. The air conditioning system may be monitored by referencing multiple pages within the SD. The conditions, crews, bleed, and cabin pressurization pages all provide information pertaining to the air conditioning system. Two pack regulators are responsible for automatically controlling and monitoring the operation of each pack. One pack regulator is assigned to each pack. Each pack regulator adjusts the flow of air to the packs by modulating the associated pack flow control valve. The pack regulators then adjust their respective pack to provide the pack output temperature demanded by the zone regulator. The pack regulators also monitor for pack malfunctions and can close the pack flow control valve if necessary to stop pack operation. The pack regulators also provide display information pertaining to the packs on the SD. Each pack regulator contains both a primary and secondary channel for maintaining pack operation. If the primary channel fails, the secondary channel operates as a backup and pack operation becomes limited. If the secondary channel subsequently fails, the pack regulator loses its ability to control the packs. Pack information is then replaced with amber X's on the bleed page. Bleed air from the pneumatic system is routed to the packs through two spring-loaded pack flow control valves. These valves regulate the rate of air flowing through the packs. They also act as pack shutoff valves. For example, during engine start, when the engine mode selector is rotated to ignition start, the pack flow control valves automatically close. This minimizes the demand on the pneumatic system in preparation for engine start. After a short time, if the engine is not started, the pack flow control valves automatically reopen. The pack flow control valves will subsequently close once an engine master switch is selected on. The pack flow control valves are directly controlled by the pack 1 and pack 2 push buttons located on the overhead air conditioning panel. When the push buttons are selected off, the valves are commanded to close. Select the pack 1 push button. When the pack push buttons are selected on, lights out, the corresponding pack flow control valve opens, provided bleed air is present. If bleed air is not available, the pack flow control valve will remain closed. In this instance, since there is a difference between the actual position of the valve and the commanded position, the fault light illuminates within the push button. The status of the pack flow control valves is displayed on the bleed page. A horizontal line indicates the valve is closed, while a green vertical line indicates the valve is open. Airflow as a result of valve modulation is depicted as an analog pointer above the valve.
Although the PAC regulators normally control their corresponding PAC flow control valves, you can exercise limited input to these valves by using the PAC flow selector. The norm position represents 100% of normal airflow. The low position is used to accommodate light passenger loads, while high is used on hot days with high passenger loads. Move the PAC flow selector to low. Low represents a request for 80% of normal flow rate. However, when low is selected, the pack may automatically select a 100% flow rate if additional cooling is required. Turn the pack flow selector to high and watch the pack flow indicator increase. The high position is a request for 120% of normal flow rate. High flow rates are automatically commanded regardless of pack flow selector positioning when operating on a single pack or the APU is the sole source of bleed air. The two air conditioning packs are located in the belly of the aircraft. Ambient air for the packs enters through air intakes and exits through air outlets. This ambient air is used by the heat exchangers to cool the hot bleed air. The intakes and outlets are modulated by the pack regulators, which control the amount of air that flows over the heat exchangers. There are no flight deck indications to monitor the status of the pack intake and outlet. However, their condition is checked during the exterior preflight. Once the bleed air has been cooled by the heat exchanger, it flows through an air cycle machine. The air cycle machine consists of a compressor and turbine which are used to produce cold air. A turbine bypass valve controls the output temperature of the packs. Valve movement is controlled by the pack regulator. When the valve is closed, air flows through the air cycle machine, causing the pack outlet temperature to decrease. When the valve is open, warm air flows around the air cycle machine, causing the pack outlet temperature to increase. Pack operation is monitored on the bleed page. Pack compressor outlet temperature is presented here because it is the point where air exits the compressor and is most susceptible to overheat conditions. A green display indicates the outlet temperature is in the normal operating range. The turbine bypass valve position is displayed here. This is an analog indicator and is always displayed in green. Select a cooler flight deck temperature and observe the position of the turbine bypass valve. When the needle is more to the left, the bypass valve closes further, resulting in a colder pack output. Now warm up the flight deck. As the needle moves to the right, the bypass valve opens resulting in hotter pack output. The pack outlet temperature is displayed at the top of the bleed page. This is the temperature of the air that is sent to the mixing unit. Air from the air conditioning packs is combined with recirculated cabin air in the mixing unit. This air is then distributed to the three aircraft zones labeled as cockpit, forward cabin, and aft cabin. The depiction of the mixing unit appears at the top of the bleed page. Cabin air is drawn into the mixing unit by two cabin fans. This recirculated air reduces the requirement for bleed air and therefore saves fuel. The cabin fans are controlled by the cabin fan's push button located on the overhead ventilation panel. Normally, this push button is in the on, lights out position. When selected on, these fans operate whenever AC electrical power is supplied to the aircraft. However, if necessary, the cabin fans can be selected off. Shut down the cabin fans.
This shuts down both cabin fans. The only indication is the white off light in the push button. Low pressure conditioned air from an external air conditioning source can be used to cool the aircraft during ground operations. LP air is attached to the air conditioning system through a low pressure ground connection point located on the belly of the aircraft near the left wing route. When in use, low pressure external air flows directly into the mixing unit and then onto the three zones. An important operational limitation states not to use low pressure external air simultaneously with air from the packs. The presence of LP external air is not depicted anywhere on the SD. Therefore, other methods must be used to determine its presence. These include asking ground personnel, listening for airflow from the ventilation vents in the flight deck, or checking for moderate temperatures on the conditions page. An emergency ram air inlet is located on the belly of the aircraft. It is normally closed and is checked during the exterior preflight. Air from the ram air inlet is fed directly into the mixing unit and then flows to the three zones. The ram air inlet can be used to provide ventilation for an unpressurized aircraft should both packs fail in flight. It can also be used for smoke elimination. The ram air inlet is controlled by the guarded ram air push button, and its status is displayed on the bleed page. Open the ram air valve and review the bleed page indications. The zone regulator is a two-channel computer which exercises overall control and monitoring of the air conditioning system. It receives input from the cockpit controls and from air temperature sensors throughout the aircraft. By comparing the position of cockpit and cabin temperature selectors with the actual temperature in each zone, the zone regulator determines which zone requires the coldest air. It then commands the pack regulators to adjust the output of the packs accordingly. If bleed air is not sufficient to meet the needs of the air conditioning system, the zone regulator can also signal the APU or engines to increase speed to satisfy bleed air requirements. The zone regulator also provides air conditioning system information for display on the SD. If the primary channel of the zone regulator fails, the secondary channel automatically acts as a backup. The alternate mode label on the condition page serves as a visual indication regarding the zone regulator's primary channel failure. If the secondary channel subsequently fails, the zone regulator loses its ability to control the pack regulators. The pack regulators then simply direct the packs to produce a steady fixed temperature. The lack of information on the conditions page and the label pack regulator are indications that both channels of the zone regulator have failed. Since the pack regulators set the output of the packs to the zone requiring the coldest air, this output may be too cold for the other zones. Therefore, the zone regulator directs the trim air valves to add hot bleed air to the zones that don't require cold air. This hot bleed air is tapped upstream of the packs and is regulated by a spring-loaded hot air pressure regulating valve. The position of these valves may be monitored on the conditions page. Here, you can see the hot air valve is open, supplying hot bleed air to the trim air valves. The temperature of the air entering each zone is presented above its respective trim valve. The hot air pressure regulating valve is controlled by the hot air push button located on the overhead air conditioning panel. It is normally left in the on, lights out position. 
This allows for automatic operation of the valve. Select the hot air push button and notice the indications. Zone temperature is displayed in green on the conditions page. You can adjust the desired zone temperature using the three zone temperature selectors on the overhead air conditioning panel. These temperature selectors allow you to select temperatures from approximately 18 to 30 degrees Celsius. Select the cockpit temperature selector to cold. The cockpit is now the zone that requires the coldest air. The trim air valve closes and the two air conditioning packs now produce air at the temperature required by that zone. The zone regulator also commands the trim air valves to open for the forward and aft zones to add enough hot air to maintain its current setting. Select the aft cabin temperature selector to hot. As a warmer temperature is commanded, the aft cabin trim air valve opens further, allowing additional hot air to warm the zone. That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. That is incorrect. That is correct. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. That is correct. That is correct.